woke up to rain around 5 in the morning and it took another hour and a half to get out of my tent. The past couple mornings there have been a bunch of slugs on my tent and my socks and shoes inside the vestibule of my tent. I crossed Bully Brook and Route 140 and caught an awesome view from the dome ledge. I was now beginning the Killington section of the long trail. Mount Killington is a big ski resort and the first mountain above 4,000 feet in elevation along the trail. The Killington section was actually pretty fun. It was a nice lead up trail from the bottom of the mountain, and only the last half mile up was pretty steep and made things interesting. I even enjoyed a few switchbacks, which seemed to be pretty rare out here in Vermont. Unfortunately, when I made it to the top, it was still overcast out and we were up in the clouds at the peak, which seemed to be the trend. This section was very rocky, and with a lot of cloudy skies and rain the past few days, it made for a dangerous area. I took a couple nasty falls on the rocks, usually trusting moss to provide some traction, which it didn't. I had no time to catch myself either fall, but luckily I fell backwards onto my pack. I was just happy not to break myself or my bear can. There even was a sign a few hundred feet later that warned about a ranger getting injured recently as well. I was running low on food and decided to walk into Rutland for the night and do a full resupply. Picked up some fries for a food truck to eat along my 7 mile road walk. I made it into Rutland and right away went to the post office to ship home my big camera and tripod. It was too much weight and I wasn't using it enough for it to make sense keeping. It was a big lift off of my shoulders in many ways. I resupplied next door at Walmart and made it to the Yellow Deli Hiker Hostel where I showered, did laundry, relaxed, and got a pizza from Hoppin' Moose Brew Co. next door. I set an early alarm and caught a 7.15 a.m. bus ride from Rutland back to the inn at Long Trail, next to the trailhead. It was about a mile past here until the main junction, where the LT and the AT split off. Alright, so I just passed the 100 mile mark, and this is where the LT splits from the AT, so the AT goes a little bit more northeast towards New Hampshire, the White Mountains, and eventually Maine and Mount Katahdin. And the long trail continues more directly north this way. So bye-bye to all the AT hikers that I have come across and uh, hope they enjoy the White Mountains. <laughs> Nikita. I met another northbound through hiker at Tucker Johnson Shelter named Rick with his awesome dog, Nikita. Nikita was easily keeping up and full of energy. The first day on trail after the split from the AT, the long trail was noticeably less maintained, more narrow, had more blowdowns, and also had a plethora of spiders making their webs right across the trail. In the mornings, I seemed to be breaking every web, and at times I was just walking while holding my trekking pole vertically in front of my face. figured I'd just do a quick little update. I'm at the David Logan shelter. I've hiked about 13 miles since the highway intersection this morning from being in Rutland, Vermont. I'm feeling pretty good. I feel like a lot of things that were going wrong in the first couple days I'm kind of fixing. 
I got a new water filter. My blisters aren't doing bad at all. I'm definitely not running out of food. I got plenty of snacks. So I feel like a lot of the things that I was kind of frustrated about aren't as bad and the bugs really haven't been that bad at all, knock on wood. I think I'm gonna push on a little bit today, do a few more miles. There's a really cool shelter built last year, like five miles ahead and it's like 4.30. I don't know if I wanna hike that far, but I'll at least do like two and a half or so. We'll see. Seemed like I was now shelter hopping, taking breaks at each one. I hung out at Ralston Rest Shelter a while and had lunch at a pond lookout. Filtered more water and chilled at David Logan Shelter. Finally hiked a bit more up to Bloodroot Gap and camped at the junction of a few snowmobile trails. It was a 17 mile day approaching 40,000 steps. I set up camp and made dinner. The bugs were so bad I took my dinner to the tent to eat before cleaning up, which would turn out to be a big mistake. Woke up early and went through my normal packing routine. It was a lovely morning with a bit of dew on my tent. The sun was penetrating through the mist in the air, creating cool looking sun rays. I got lucky having a privy right near me at the top of that ridge too. I decided to wait a couple miles until sunrise shelter to have my pop tart breakfast. Check out this awesome shelter. This is what I missed out on last night, camping before it about two miles. Definitely wouldn't have been empty if there had been people here. It was probably a good decision to just camp where I camped, but there's even windows, check this out. There's four big windows. Probably one of the newer ones. I, I just backtracked half mile. I stopped here to take a break. Afterwards, I just walked back right down the mountain. They came up like half mile, so I had to walk another half mile right back up, and that's like 400, 500 feet, something like that. And then this trail just does that again like three more times today, so that should be interesting. I really could not believe I did an extra 1,000 feet in elevation that day, but oh well. When I walked by the same Peregrine Falcon warning sign again, my heart sank as I recognized it, and I knew I was not going in the right direction. I hiked past a couple going down and then back up, and they were like, did you already lap us? I made it to the slopes of Middlebury College Snowball early that evening. I filtered some water and talked to a couple groups who were walking out from swimming at Pleiad Lake. They seemed to not be getting swarmed with mosquitoes as I was, and I was covered head to toe. And at that moment, I had a realization. Oh my gosh. 
Yeah, another just dumb mistake. I can't find my little pocket stove thing. So I can't boil water and I just waited till like eight to eat because I thought the bugs would go away and they didn't. And then I tried to get out and find my stove, but I can't find it. I think I left it at the last campsite. I put it down before I was done eating. Usually I put the stove back in the little case they used to eat. And I just never did after I finished eating. So I'm pretty sure it's just back at the other campsite. I'm really kicking myself though. I feel like these small mistakes with like my trekking pole breaking and the water filter didn't work the first four or five days. And now I lose my stove and all these little mistakes. I just turned around and went the wrong way for half a mile today. It's either gonna catch up to me or nothing is gonna stop me. I'm just gonna be able to finish the trail no matter what. Pretty frustrating to be honest. And tonight, instead of making Spanish rice, I'm having a spam quesadilla. So I'll let you know how that goes. Mm -hmm.